And I work in the ceramic and glass theme and more specifically I work in the fuel cell group uh, where we have a long story on the development of solid oxide fuel cells and now we are on also interested in secondary batteries. The surface analysis facilities uh, are very important for our work um, mainly in two aspects. With the seams we are able to map the ions in the structure and this allows us for instance to isotopically level one ion and follow uh, the transport of the ion into the structure and so and so this helps us to develop uh, higher conductive materials that is fundamental for, for, for these electrochemical devices and on the other hand um, both seams and lies uh, uh, give us a lot of information about the first monatomic layers um, compositionally and, and this, this will help us to study the surfaces and interfaces and uh, analyze, for instance, the gradation processes in the, in the systems. Within this lab, we specifically have a very unique piece of instrumentation, which is a time of flight secondary ion mass spectrometer, TOFSIMS, which is combined with a low energy ion scattering instrument, LICE. Um, and this is a unique combination of instruments that we have in the lab, um, in that they're both connected under vacuum so that we are able to like, pass samples between the two instruments. The equipment is incredibly versatile in that we can place any material system into the um, instrument as long as it's UHV compatible. This means that we can look at polymer-based materials, organic materials, biological, bioengineered materials, ceramic oxides, semiconductors, and we even have an, a project working on ionic liquids. We're trying to make um, the next generation of electronic devices out of conducting polymers and small molecules. So hopefully the next generation of devices can be flexible and cheaper. I use XRD to look at the molecular orientation of a molecule called thalocyanine, which is used in organic solar cells. I work in the Centre for Nuclear Engineering that we have, and I'm working on uh, new fuels for uh, advanced nuclear reactors. Uh, XRD is a great way, a fast way to, to see if we have any, any impurities left in the materials that we're making. We've got a wide range of facilities in the materials department which look at characterising the structural and also the mechanical properties of materials. For example, um, one of these techniques is X-ray diffraction, which I use a lot in my own research. It's a really valuable technique to a materials department because it looks at the core structure of the materials. And by understanding the structure of the materials, we can therefore make the materials better. Um, our X-ray facility is particularly special in that we have a wide range of different diffractometers which can um, all do different techniques. The different materials have different crystal structures and because we, we synthesize them from each other, so to make sure that we've actually got a full reaction, we use the XRD to see if there's any traces of the other crystals left in the peaks. Uh, and this gives us a, a, a speedy, reliable, efficient process to uh, determine whether we've got uh, full reaction. X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy, or XPS, uh, is a widely used technique. Uh, in the Department of Materials we have a brand new system, which is a high pressure XPS system, unique in the UK. The instruments uh, that we have will be able to study a wide range of materials, from catalysts, energy materials, biomaterials. Typically, these measurements have been done in ultra-high vacuum, so it's vacuum out of space, um, and that's a disconnect with how these materials actually operate in the real world, uh, which is at, normally at many atmospheres pressure. So actually bridging this so-called pressure gap is very important, and that's what this instrument will be able to do. So we'll be able to measure pressures up to 25 millibar, while still less than atmospheric pressure, that's 10 orders of magnitude difference uh, compared to what has previously been available. And so uh, that gives us a unique capability within the department here to really start to understand the chemical processes that are occurring on the, the surface of a wide range of systems.
We have a really highly specialised team of um, technicians that work with all of the equipment we have here. And they're really helpful because if you have any problems, they've got the expertise to help you solve those problems and they maintain the equipment. So it's always at a really high standard. I think we're quite unique here at Imperial in that we make sure that the PhD students and postdocs that are using the instrument are trained to use it, which means they become independent researchers and it also means that they can are fundamentally involved in developing their research methodologies and they understand the data that they're getting more thoroughly 